Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Will and in this particular video I want to kind of bounce off of my last video that I did regarding DirectX for XAML, the template which you can find in Visual Studio. Um, the thing is it's been a little while since I touched on this particular project type and I want to kind of break down a little bit of how the structure of the code base works at a particularly higher level um, just for those of us who like myself come from a c-sharp um, background kind of look at this project for the first time thinking whoa this is a lot of stuff well it's as a good prerequisite you want to have a little bit of c++ understanding under your belt if you at least want to understand or leverage understanding for how the pipeline is working utilizing DirectX, which is using C++ in this particular instance. And so what I've done, I've, I'm preparing here a, um, a kind of a gentle walkthrough about how the whole thing works, the program. So much further ado, let's go into a little bit of, um, a little bit of the, of the knowledge and the theory. So summary, this is a gentle walkthrough of how the 3D scene renderer class of the XAML DX template works. So actually it's going to be more of a general overview how the whole program works, not just that particular file. So the 3D rendering pipeline is a set of stages for programming, typically leveraging the GPU in order to render 3D graphics. One thing that will probably help make a lot of sense if you want to embark on kind of playing around with this project type, the DX11 XAML template, is understanding at a basic fundamental level, the direct, I'm sorry, no, better said, the graphics rendering pipeline or the 3D rendering pipeline. So basically um, what it is, uh, as it says on the on the file here, it's just, it's a set of stages which determine um, what the graphics card does in order to take everything from the input and output graphics at the other end. So there is a set particular set of stages that determine this. So the 3D rendering pipeline, as I've described, there are various stages to the pipeline and some common terminology is used within DirectX in order to identify functionality, for example, vertex shader, swap chaining, constant buffer. So if we just pick out one, for example, let's just say swap chaining. So what is swap chaining? Swap chaining is quite an important technique in 3D rendering. And I, yes, 3D rendering, I was just, you display a graphic or you draw, say a, a graphic on the screen. Now in that particular, in that process of drawing the graphic, you may experience some artifacts in regards to the actual generation of the, um, graphic itself. So what swap chaining does is that it draws the graphic and stores it in the back buffer, which is a particular part, a particular space in memory, and it's then switched with the front buffer. So all you see is the finished produced graphic rather than the process itself in real time. So you get a more smoother, less tearing kind of effect of your graphics. Now the constant buffer, all it is, is just a set of um, constants, as the name suggests, that may be needed at, um, by the shaders. And we define the constant buffer because at any point in the pipeline, the shaders may rely on the constants that are defined here. So DirectX, just to kind of summarize, is a Microsoft created framework for utilizing tools for creating 2D and 3D graphics. It's programmed, it is programmed primarily in C++, but there have been higher level wrapper abstractions of DirectX implemented in languages such as C Sharp, namely Manage DirectX, which is deprecated, SlimDX, which has um, deprecated versions. Um, other platforms such as XNA, which is a discontinued Microsoft product, have a managed runtime that can facilitate games development. So, um, you know, as a sort of alternative to XNA, which is discontinued, um, you can look into Monogame Framework, which is kind of like the next of kin of sorts. So I've got a couple of references or so over here. I'll see if I can leave them in the description so you can have easy access to the links. And without much further ado, I'm going to just switch my screen if this works. Yep. And we're going to go straight into the project type and kind of explore what's going on. So one of the first things we want to take note of is the entry point, which is primarily the main of your project, which I've named DX11 game XAML main C and it's given the C++ extension. So this is the main entry point of the whole program. And you have a couple main headers as well. So if you're familiar with C++, you'd be familiar with header files and what they do. Um, 
let's see. So we have the DirectX 11 game XAML. So your project type will have the C++ file and its respective header file, which my one is here. I'll just scroll to the top. And then you have another um, file called the th sample 3D scene renderer.cpp and it's respected, which kind of um, defines the functions and variables that are being used in the in the main file, in the CPP files. <laughs> so if we start at the main entry point and kind of work our way down a little bit, with the DX11 game main, DX11 game XAML main rather, um, one of the first things we want to do is kind of set up our devices. So if you're familiar with DirectX, you'll you'll probably be familiar with setting up the device resources, which is kind of a necessary prerequisite to actually rendering stuff on the screen. So one of the main prerequisites is to actually um, define and kind of set up rather our device resources. So we're doing that at this stage. So if I go ahead and go to the definition here, this is gonna be in the header file, yep. So it's a pointer to the, or a shared pointer to the device resources. We don't have to really delve into this much because this is stuff that's already provided for us. We don't have to really worry too much about it. Generally speaking, as you know, the whole template is provided, but you know, anyway. So if we go here, I wanna draw your attention to the, um, to this, uh, M underscore scene renderer. So if we go to the respective header file, which has this definition, and we go to the pointer pointing to the sample 3D um, sample 3D scene renderer. If I just go to the definition here, so yep, we're just going. Excuse me, we're going to the sample 3D scene renderer header, and this has a set of definitions for the sample 3D scene renderer CPP file, which leverages the main bulk of the um, graphics rendering. So for example, uh, let's have a look here. If I go and go to the definition of this functionality, we end up in the sample 3D. I keep reading it as 3DS, but <laughs> it's sample 3D scene render. From the top, kind of work our way bottom, just kind of glossing over this file a little bit, roughly. Roll down, keep going. Some of this code is superfluous, as you can see, as I was kind of experimenting and playing around with stuff. Okay, so this is one of the first main things that we, you're gonna wanna do, and it's to create the window size dependent resources. So we're kind of um, defining the output size of the, um, of the window that the cube is being rendered inside of, and the aspect ratio, as well as the field of view. So that's been done here. So in your version of the template, you're gonna see all this information here. So now you kind of get an idea what it does. And now called once per frame, the update function rotates the cube and calculates the model and view matrices. So if if I'm not tracking, so if I'm not mistaken, this m.tracking is basically a flag which says if I am not manually rotating the cube with the mouse pointer, which hopefully we'll see later down the line in the file, then I want to rotate the cube. And then we have our rotate function here. And then we have start tracking, m tracking equals true, signifying the manual tracking of the cube. And then we have tracking updates. When tracking the 3D cube can be rotated, rotate around this y axis by tracking pointer position, which is basically referring to the mouse relative to the output screen width. So there's a bit of dynamic um, logic going on here to kind of ascertain how fast you're rotating the cube with regards to the screen resolution. So that's been done up there. Now I wanna draw your attention to the render function and um, what we're doing here renders one frame using the vertex and pixel shader. So this is quite a, this is probably be quite a bulky function as it's basically um, utilizing the vertex pixel, pixel shaders. So as a kind of bit of, of a prerequisite, what we want to do, we only want to draw once everything is ready. So we don't want to draw in our update loop going at, I believe, I'm assuming 60 frames per second in this case, we don't want to draw something that may not be fully rendered. So what we want to do, we want to make sure everything is loaded before we render. If not, 
the whole function will just return so it won't even do anything and then we scroll down we have a auto called context which is accessing which is um, assigned the value of um, this member which is the get d3d device context so one of the early things you do when you're working with basic direct x 11 um, technologies is that what you're going to be doing is setting your device context early on so this is being assigned to this variable here and then what we're we're accessing the member or pointing rather to update sub resource one and we're basically setting up a device context as you can see as a template takes care of here so i won't go into much explanation as to what's going on here uh, your template will have the same information and then again you want to create your device dependent resources which is done in this function here kind of a similar stage again some of this code is a bit superfluous because i was playing around with the with the program so don't worry too much about what's being written here because your template will be a fresh template which will have all the code necessary to boot up the cube i'm just basically breaking down what's going on at a high level so you can kind of have an understanding if it's a little bit confusing at first okay so after the vertex shader file is loaded create the shader and input layout so over here um we're creating a task we're creating we're basically instantiating the vertex shader so we're loading the vertex shader here on this line and we're also implementing a kind of a fail safe for errors so if i go ahead here i should be able to break point at some point if i want to debug yeah so um set a breakpoint on this line to catch win32 api errors so if at any point you have errors in at this stage uh, if i go back at this stage of the pipeline you can go into the file here that i was at direct x help h and i can set a breakpoint and examine um the exception that comes up which is quite useful actually so this is a direct x helper file and um yeah it comes in really handy And so we have to also define the vertex description, which we're describing the position and the color of our target um, target model geometry, however you want to describe it. So, and it's defined by a few parameters here, our RGB format over here, and also the position value as well. So this is part of the vertex description. And again, we have the same kind of fail safe here. So if you want to debug as well, you can act, you can set a break at the DirectX helper as well, the DirectX helper file to help. Superfluous code as I was just playing around before. Again here, so more or less the same thing. Pixel shader. So quite similarly, now what we want to do is load the pixel shader. And this line of code, as you'll see in your own template, will do basically just that. And we have the fail safe vertex here. shader loaded. Um, then what we want to do is actually create something. So we have the tools necessary to actually create some geometry. So we have an auto here, create cube task. And its functionality here contains this cube vertices function. Loads mesh indices. Each trio of indices represents a triangle to be rendered on the screen. For example, 0, 2, 1 means that the vertices with the index 0, 2, and 1, respectively, respectively from the vertex buffer, compose the first triangle of this Okay, mesh. so once the cube has been, the information referring to the cube's geometry has basically been defined, then what we want to do is actually render our object. So we have a function here, create cube task, which we're calling, which I believe was defined above. I'll just quickly have a look. Yep. Let's go back. And we're calling that functionality to actually load the cube geometry itself. So that's there. And finally, we want to release the device dependent resources. So um, if we don't do this, then we're going to have issues with memory later down the line. Um, fairly quickly probably so we want to make sure we're refreshing our devices uh, at each update of our program and that brings us to the end of the sample 3d scene rendering C renderer what this does um, if i just go to the definition if we look at the sample frame per second text renderer class which should be a cpp class 
a class it. rather what it does it uses direct 2d resources and i believe direct write in order to write the text on the screen so i may or may not have played uh the cube at the beginning of the video but if you if i did you would see that it would have had a frame counter now i actually thought that was done by xaml but it's actually done by direct write slash direct 2d so that's kind of good to know and that's all this is kind of taken care of here where are we our direct x11 cpp okay scrolling down and yeah this is just calling the functions that we kind of went through already in the sample 3d scene renderer so if i'll just go to the definition so yeah that's going to wrap it up for now i hope this tutorial or rather like a kind of a just an overview walkthrough kind of helps shed a bit of light on this template as it can be a little bit obscure for us guys that come from a c-sharp background so hopefully it's a little bit less confusing and um yeah thanks very much for watching and i hope you have a great day Bye bye